more and more evident and more aware that everything that you perceive is a reflection of your mind. And so, um, just funny things have happened over the years. I remember in the Appalachian Mountains doing a, a gathering one time near Murphy, North Carolina, and um, I went to bed and slept through the night, but apparently there was huge lightning and thunderstorms during the night, which I was unaware of. Um, then the next morning that everybody was buzzing about how loud the crashes were of thunder and jumping, you know, two feet out of the bed in the middle of the night because of this booming, crashing thunder and everything. I was just like, hmm, because I, I didn't even hear a thing. But uh, we had a long row of buildings and then my friend Resta, who received all this music from the angels, she puts the door open, she comes out, she goes, it was me. <laughs> Because you just start to see everything. You don't see the weather as outside of you. You don't see anything. We've had things over the years, uh, issues with computers and internet network systems and cars and just everything imaginable. But instead of looking for the cause and the form, um, we, we go to the mind and, and we've had some beautiful reflections too of that shift of mind where the literally the problem in form d disappears. You know, whatever was broken is fixed without calling a repairman or whatever. It's just, it's a miracle. Oh, there's a miracle. <laughs> there it is, it's there. Because it's, it's a whole new way of thinking. Instead of having something wrong with your car, taking it to a mechanic, you know, going to your inner mechanic, you know, the, the spirit. It starts to become a habit and you start to, to do it with everything. So like Kirsten's saying, when there's a feeling that something's stuck or not flowing or whatever, then it's a time to, to go inward, back into that prayer and devotion. And what's happening too is you, you lose the investment in outcomes. Like for example, with all the traveling and touring we've done, there was a time when Jackie was, was handling flight, booking of flights and frequent flyer miles and so on and so forth. And now from a linear perspective, you would think, okay, the task of booking a flight is you go on, you have to find the flight and fill out all the information and then finally you get to the button where you push the button and you actually pay for the flight and then it will give you sometimes a confirmation or you get this and that. And then you get to the point where you go through all that, Jackie pushes the button and nothing happens. Now. Typically, if you were looking at it in terms of a linear task of booking a flight, you would say, well, it all went good until the final step. And the, the ego could interpret that there's, a, there's a, a, a technical issue with the website or something like this. No, 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 no. At times, Jackie would just step back and go, I don't, I don't think that flight is to be booked. You see how different that is from being invested in the outcome to being so tuned in that, if, that all things work together for good and when things don't work, there, there's, a, there's a, a purpose underneath, but it's not that the site's not working. You know, it's being so open to be guided and then another flight will come in, it would be better or it's delayed until a time when a decision can be made. Perhaps it's just a timing issue, there wasn't quite time for that flight to be booked so the button doesn't work and so forth. So those are like nuances and it, it actually goes reverse of a lot of ways of, of thinking you can diagnose a problem in the world and then you go about the problem solving mechanisms that we've all been taught based on past learning to remedy the problem. And we're learning from the Course that there's no problems in the world. The only problem is with your connection with the Spirit. And if you have an egoic block, those are getting washed away. That's the problem. It's an internal problem. As Jesus says in the workbook, one problem, one solution, salvation is accomplished. But he's not saying that the problem is outside of yourself. If you're defining the problems as outside, then you'll define the solutions outside. The only problem with that is it just keeps recurring. You just got a daily 
uh, just a litany of problems which you can try to solve them as best you can. Sometimes you have to move on to the next day and there's carryovers from the previous day's problems and you've got a pile of problems to deal with and that's the human condition. And all of us, of course, have gone through that and dealt with that, but, but this is about inner listening and not trying to force outcomes. Just let the outcome be given. So, you know, that's what we say when Francis is saying, whatever you perceive in form will be a reflection of the mind. Just don't count yourself short. Just don't discount the power of your mind of to draw forth the witnesses because we are always drawing forth witnesses and our mind is extremely powerful and if you have this dedication and devotion, whatever you need, if it's a, it's a book or a pamphlet, a mystical mind training uh, experience or mystical mind training partner or a Skype partner or someone that you can talk to, um, that's pretty much how our days go. It's, it's quite unconventional too because sometimes we marvel at some of these centers, the way they come up and the people that show up and the things that are provided and the things that are given, you know, you could just do a whole movie on this place in Mexico, all the miracles that have come, just how things are handled, how things come in. You know, it's, it's, a, it's got more of a fairy tale quality to how it all happens because it's all so deeply purposeful and nothing's at random and there's so many people involved. For us going down to Mexico, it seems to be a different culture than the United States, different language, different customs, you know, meeting carpenters, going out to meet carpenters who come and handcraft uh, from the wood, handcraft the bunk beds, you know, build them right in the house, you know. We don't really have that, you know. In the United States, you hire a carpenter to come into your house and, oh, it's going to be a lot of money. No. This was not, you know, everything just trickles in, even handling finances. We go down there, we go to a couple banks, no, nothing happens at this bank, no, the computer's down, we get funneled directly where we're supposed to go with the finances. Everything, down to the most minute detail, is orchestrated by the Spirit just because the Spirit is in charge and there's practical guidance that's given so we can flow and be in the joy and not put so much time and effort into how, how, figuring out things in the world. You know, how do you handle the bedding, how do you handle the food. You know, some of you might have heard, of, do you have soup kitchens over here? Like, for homeless, where they just like, give food to the poor? We get that. We actually, people give us food. Lots of it. <laughs> it's amazing. People come from other parts of the country, they're like, what? You, you, it's, we're so focused in what we do that, that actually a huge amount of food gets given to us. It's hard to, to believe, but because we don't really look like homeless people. <laughs> you know, I, don't think, I, mean, I don't know what they, what they look like, but it's a, we're, you know, we shave sometimes. Jason, <laughs> he's, he's bringing in all of our free food. Uh, no, it's, it, it's coming, it comes in all kinds of ways and it's very unexpected, you know, because we're not looking for things in certain ways, but it's the Spirit brings it in, brings it in. Sarah knows she's nodding her head, she's yeah, been a food, like food bank, festival. like food bank. Amazing stories, they come back from the pantry, you're not going to believe what we got, you know. And, I mean, it's just, it comes in all kinds of different ways, this support of just the Spirit using the symbols of the world so you can keep your mind on the peace and the love and the sharing and extending and the communicating and that's what we're doing and then the other stuff it's very much like seek ye first the kingdom of heaven and all else will be added unto you. These are practical examples of, of it actually works, you know, it's not like pie in the sky kind of you know, wishful thinking, it's just would you give yourself over fully to this purpose, then things are taken care of. Yeah, I think this question of inner listening, you know, it, it's most important to come back to that, just the willingness and the devotion to, to stay open and keep at it, because 
again, like Kirsten was describing, there's, this, there's been this seeming break of communication during the fall from grace or during the seeming separation, and this is a way of reconnecting. You're like opening a channel, you're opening a channel that, that was shut off by the ego. And so, it takes patience, it takes practice, it takes willingness. Um, we join together so much, that that's part of an acceleration, I think, you know, because when you have a group of people, you know, when you're practicing for yourself is one thing, when you're doing it in a relationship, you know how that can be. When you're doing it in a group, you can just even imagine, you know, of, of the fine-tuning and the nuances that come, come in with that. Because the, the ego is terrified of the Holy Spirit. You know, the ego does not want there to be this re-establishment of, of connection, of communication. The ego is part of that break and wanting to maintain that break. And so, uh, sometimes it can be a timing thing, where you start to get some feelings or some signs or even words or images and then it seems to take a while. Um, it can almost be like a premonition of something that's to come, but it's just not, not now, not yet. And, and so you develop patience, infinite patience in that. And then I think the more fine-tuned you get, um, you also are aware that there are no accidents. So, um, when doorways seem to be closed, or things seem to be locked, or things seem to be what the world would call blocked, you, you start to have a whole different perception of that. It would be like, imagine you were some water coming down a mountain, and then you encountered some uh, rocks and boulders along the way, and the water just splashed and rolled around the boulder, you know. It, it didn't hit the boulder and go, hmm, was I not listening <laughs> uh, when I came to this boulder? Uh, was I off in my hearing of spirit? You know, no, it just flows. You notice how it, it isn't, it never gets blocked, it flows around. And even if it gets dammed up, let's say it comes to a valley and it comes down and it goes, oh, then it just sits there for centuries, <laughs> as a pond. <laughs> it doesn't go, was I not hearing right that, that, that this pond, or this valley, I would hit this valley? No, it just goes in and sits in the pond. You see, that's how you have to do, you have to be like a twig in the river. And the river will go here and there, and the twig will bounce around and go where it goes, but you have no investment you know, in the form, you're invested in the peace of mind. And so you could be a happy twig, going babbling down the river, you know. And even if you go over the waterfalls, wee, you know. It's like, you know, you might have some fun experiences being a twig, but you, but you don't really have to try to figure it out. You know, you, the thing you want to pay attention to is how do you feel. That's the most important thing always, is how you feel. That's what the lesson really is. It's a lesson in, in the Beatitudes. <laughs>